everyone. Today I thought I would tell you a little bit more about a swatch that I started making during a workshop that I took when I was in Edinburgh earlier this year. The workshop is called Quotidian Colorwork and it's taught by or the, the person who made it up is uh, Felicity Fort, known as Felix or Knit Sonic. And in case you're not familiar with her work, buy the book. She self-published this book, which is called the Knit Sonic Stranded Colorwork Source Book. And in this book, she describes how, in a very systematic way, how you can design your patterns for stranded color work based on everyday inspirations. And in uh, the book she has like these different steps. First one is get to know your inspiration source, pick your palette, design an initial pattern, pick an initial shading scheme, knitted stranded color work, start swatching, review and modify and then finish and block your swatch. So this is by far my favorite knitting book. When I heard about it the first time, I was so intrigued by the idea of coming up with your own patterns and this is really such a good help for how to do it and it makes the whole process very accessible even if you're, I mean, I'm not a designer, I have, I have no clue. Um, so if you're like me, don't have any clue, but you like the idea of taking an object or a color scheme or a photo that you would like and transform it into knitting so this is the book that you should get and it's a it feels like a playbook so I'm just keep getting back to it and back to it it's a book that you can really work with it's not something that you have a look at once and then it goes into your bookshelf but I really am working with it a lot so these were one of my my best invested Swedish kroner and as I, I had bought the book before and then I went to Edinburgh and there I took a class with her um, where you were supposed to bring your own inspiration source and then start a swatch during the class and I forgot to bring something because I didn't read these instructions but I had brand new sneakers when I went to the festival so I thought that I would take those um, as my inspiration source and then I will knit my swatch from that and I started knitting the swatch during the workshop uh, and then I revisited my ideas later on and now I'm finished with the swatch and I find it always so interested and inspiring how others think when you see their swatches and how they transform certain patterns or features in their in their objects to the knitting. So I thought that today I would explain to you how I thought and how I came up with the patterns in my swatch. The first thing that I wanted to tell you about is the palette that I chose. I have six colors all together and this one was the first one that I chose and that's just the side, the lighter blue of the shoe. Then I also have a darker blue, which is the tip of the shoe and also on the back there is a panel of uh, this darker blue. And the yarn that I have been using is Jameson and Smith, they are two ply jumper weight. So I have three colors in the Jameson and Smith. Uh, and then I have also been using a vintage Shetland yarn. Uh, and I got it from the woman that has been importing Shetland yarn to Sweden in the 80s. She still has um, a small shop or like you can go to her house and buy some yarn there. So that is what I did there and it's um, the yarn is called Hunters of Brora but it is discontinued. Yes, so I have these two um, and then also a very clear choice was the white uh, which is the stripe on the side and then also the, the upper part of the sole that you can see on the side. I used um, a clear white one. Then I have a red one and that is the van size of the back part of the sole. 
and so I, I found this like the perfect shade of red. Mm, then I have a more beige one. On the inside of the shoe I could found like this beige uh, shade and I also figured it would be good for shading. And then I have this brown one which I chose due to the sole, the, the lower part of the sole of the shoe. But I think this one is the only one in the whole palette that maybe isn't exactly the color. But I had this one at home so I, I figured I could, I could just as well use it. So during the workshop we cast on, I think it was 36 stitches plus 8 steak stitches. And in the beginning uh, Felix told us a little bit about how the system works and how we are knitting the swatch and so on. So we just did a little bit of plain uh, one color stockinette. And then the first idea that I wanted to play with was this very thick line that is on the side of the shoe. So that's the first, my first try here. But on the shoe the stripe looks really bold and I didn't think that it was showing in my design. Uh, so then I tried to make it thicker but on the first try I messed up somewhere. So I just started over. Uh, because one of the things that uh, Felix always talks about is that you shouldn't rip the swatch. I mean in this case I, might, I, I could have done it but even though I of, of course want it to be nice it's still only a swatch. So I messed up and then I just continued and here I knit the, the bold line on the side of the stripe again. And I think it was much better than the first one because it looks now when it is thicker with two stitches it looks more like the bold one on the shoe but I still think it looks very as you can see here it looks a little bit like a like a step almost and not this that much as a smooth line so I wasn't completely happy but I was a little bit tired of it after knitting it for three times. Uh, then I have some stripes as the net next part in the swatch which are the stripes on the side of the shoe. The next part is this um, like a round half circle in dark blue and that was supposed to uh, resemble the tip of the shoe and I chose just the light, lighter blue as a background shade and I thought I liked the idea but I didn't think it showed enough so the contrast be between these two colors were, wasn't strong enough. Another idea that I played with are the seams that are used as a design element on the shoes and uh, I recreated it here and then also uh, higher up. Next one I revisited the, the tip of the shoe, the dark blue one and now I just played with some more higher contrast shading colors in the background which I quite like actually. And the fun th part with the with the brown color is that I don't really like it too much in the uh, in the ball but I think in the swatch it is really nice it really matches the other colors colors quite well uh, so I'm quite pleased with this one then I introduced the red shade into the swatch uh, and what I did here is two different variations of the red logo this, that is on the back part of the shoe then I did some stripes again because here on the first one I did two rows of stripes and here it's only one, one row per stripe. And the next part is the line again and I'm still not really satisfied with it. I still, it is better than the, than the first one. Um, but here in the middle it's because on the shoe it is uh, asymmetrical and I tried to recreate it but when you repeat it then it doesn't really it doesn't really get the effect that I that I wanted. Uh, I'm, I'm not really sure I'm not too not perfectly happy with it um, but I, I didn't really feel like doing it again so I uh, here as you can see I have the the tip of the shoe or these half circles are a little bit smaller and then I revisited the idea and made them much larger and I also reversed the shading in the background and I really like this part like I think this part uh, this one and this one are two of my favorites in the whole swatch 
Um, yes, yeah, so that's the tip of the shoe and then some more shading in the background. Then I, as I said here, I wasn't too happy with the asymmetrical and the repeat of the, of the pattern. I went back to the line on the side and made it symmetrical. But now I think that it's doesn't really feel like a line, like, oh, I, I, I'm not sure. So this one, I, I just stopped somewhere, but that's both like a, a good and a bad thing because you can never stop. You could just keep on swatching forever because you have an idea and then you just tweak it a little bit and then you think, yeah, but maybe if you, I just change this little stitch, then it might look different or better. Or, oh, so I'm still not 100% happy. Well, well, here I have the seam again. Um, and then the, these brown shapes I ca came up with when I looked at the sole of the shoe, which had these just like stars and symmetrical figures on it on the back, which I really liked. And I, I played with some different shading ideas and I also thought that this, the red could be a nice contrast for the middle row. Uh, so I played around with that. And then I, because when I had a look at my swatch, I thought that it might be nice to try and make the different ideas or the different parts of the design blend into one another a little bit more. So then I started with the, with the light blue, which I still maybe can see as my main color somehow. So I did a few rows of these. Then I continued with the white stripe and the dark blue stripe uh, and then I knitted the red logo again, uh, which, which was my favorite from these two. But here I had some, I had a really tight tension. So the middle stitch, the white one, doesn't really show so much. So I tried to have a loose tension here and revisited that idea. And then I also have... Uh, knitted again the the blue half circles from the shoe that I had here but in a in a smaller scale in a smaller scale um, and then this upper part and that you can see here is some more geometrical shapes from the sole so it is also uh, represented by the colors the brown the brown and the and the white and the the beige uh, and here in the in the very top I have my white line again as I have tried to blend it in more with the the other background the the beige one the lower part doesn't really show and there I didn't really know how I should do the shading so I just wanted to stop and finish off the swatch with the um, with the, the my main color again but the shading from this through this is quite is maybe not optimal because the two stitches here and the blue they more seem to be like dots which wasn't really the idea so that's something that is so interesting that you have an idea and then you put it maybe on paper or do some sketching and then when you knit it it might look totally different than you thought yes so this is my swatch and I I like it the fun thing was that when it was still on the needles that it, I didn't really like it too much um, but then I cut it and I blocked it and it's really it looks totally different now um, so the yarn really the single strands of yarns they really melt into one another much more and I'm quite I'm quite happy with it actually and I also as I said I wasn't too sure of the brown in the beginning but I really yes I really like it so, if you are just the tiniest bit interested in uh, Stranded Color Work or Fair Isle, you really, really, really should buy the book. It's, it's great. Just buy it. It's, you won't regret it. And I hope that you found it a bit interesting to hear my thoughts behind my design. Leave me a like if you did. I have also made a video with the, the other swatches from the classes that I took in Edinburgh and also in a course that I took here in Stockholm. So if you haven't already, go have a watch. Or if you want to, you can also subscribe to my channel. And I will see you next Wednesday. Bye bye!